Hello there, my crafty friends. It's Ashley Pfeiffer, the maker behind Stamped AF. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada, and for this month's global Stampin' video hop, we are creating with pretty papers. And what's prettier than this? Full disclosure, I've used every last bit of this paper and have none left to show you. So I am going to use the festive foils, which is also super pretty. I am going to use this lovely die and we're going to modify it just ever so slightly. And this seriously is so easy. You could make a ton of them in no time flat. So I'm just going to run this through my die cutting machine. Came out perfectly. Now I like to use a ruler or any kind of straight edge to kind of reinforce those score lines. They're not super obvious. Now, I don't know that you need to go as far as using your bone folder, but I do like to guide these pieces just with my ruler so that I don't overdo it. If I could just see line. Okay, and then we're going to kind of fold those back and then these ones are going to go in. So same thing, I just lean it against my ruler and push down. Nothing fancy. Okay, and then we've also got our score lines in the middle. Now these ones I find I don't need a ruler for. And just using your fingers to burnish them seems to be enough. I kind of feel like a bone folder would be overkill. Okay, so you can go ahead and just assemble it like that, but we are going to dress it up just a little bit. So in the middle, I am going to take my second, uh, let me just tell you because I never know, is it the second smallest, second largest? Uh, it is, let's go to the widest. It's about one and three eighths. So I'm just going to take some tape and secure it in place. And I'm just using some Scotch low tack tape. I am going to put the bulk of it on the inside because we're not going to keep that circle. I don't want to have like an indent from the tape. I probably didn't need such a big piece. I've got some cute little confetti. They're kind of big, but could work. So at the same time that I'm running that through, I'm going to take my die with a piece of vellum and this is, uh, right now, it's just a scrap. It is two by four and a half. So we're going to take it so that we get these middle two windows. Anything else is just bonus. We could really cut it down. You really only need, uh, I'd say about three inches or so. I'm just going to take it like this. We'll have a little bit extra. Okay, so I know this doesn't look like much right now, but it will. So we're going to use that same ruler trick. I'm actually just going to cut my ends off because I don't need them. You could use window sheet, but window sheet is just so hard to score and burnish. Right now, this kind of wants to go the other way, but I'm going to keep it the way it went into my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and I'm just going to kind of burnish it a little bit there. Do you see where the other ones are? Now we can go ahead and adhere it. Now, if you want it to be crisp, you can burnish it. I again say just with your fingers, if you use a bone folder, it might go a little bit too far. Okay, so there is our lovely circle. I actually put the die too close and cut off a little bit of this, but that will be tucked in, so no big deal. You probably wouldn't have even known if I hadn't said anything. So I'm actually going to go ahead and cut those pieces off just on the other side of those score lines. And then because this is DSP, I'm not going to use liquid adhesive. I'm going to use a little bit of tear and tape. I find with liquid adhesive, 
I get glue worms and I don't want glue worms. We'll see how this goes. I will use just a little bit of glue. This is liquid, Tombow liquid adhesive. It's just in a fine tip bottle. Of course, it's almost empty, so it doesn't want to come out. It's probably just enough to prevent glue worms. Okay, and then we'll remove this tear and tape. This paper does feel a little more delicate than the um, Light to Glow DSP did. You do want to keep that right in the center. Now the other thing you could do is instead of trying to burnish that vellum beforehand, you can kind of get it to go with your DSP. So now we will add some tear and tape here because I'm going to hide that little bit. Whoopsie. Tear and tape is literally right in front of me and I'm like, where's my tear and tape? Okay, so we'll go ahead and add it there. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and lay that flat. Now it is tear and tape, so you want to be sure that you've got it where it needs to be before you burnish it. Right now, I still have a little bit of wiggle room. There we go. So we've got some extra stability on that one arm, if you will. And then I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue here because I want these two to stay together. Keep that on the other end. And I have a beautiful gold Lindor to fit in here. And I love the vellum because you can't tell what this is. You can see there's something in there, but you can't tell. Okay, and then we're just going to fold it. Beautiful. And I think instead of using this uh, very vanilla and gold, we are going to use of our Simply Elegant trim. Would that look nice? I think so. I would try and tie it while it's still on the roll. Now you want to be gentle. You don't want to rip these. And I would suggest that with the trim, you tie a knot because this little stinker, I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> I can never get the stuff to stay tied fully. Okay, so there we go. We've got a knot. We'll tie a bow at the end. because this one doesn't need to last and won't bother with a glue dot. But if you found that you, maybe you're making a whole bunch of these for a family dinner or some kind of get together, you could just roll up like half of a glue dot and put it right where the knot is and that will keep it together. Now, one final step is to take one of the coordinating dies from this set and we'll put a sentiment on it. Now, it drives me crazy that this die set doesn't have a coordinating stamp set because, I mean, really, we don't have a lot of sentiments that would fit on here, right? So these are the dies. Now, it would look super cute to have, like, a star on there, but there's no sentiment. So I decided to go for the little bannered end, and I just did for you, and this is from Handmade Wishes. I would love to do like the with love, but it's a little bit too tall. So we will, st we could do joy, um, but I think I'm going to stick with the for you, and we'll do that in very vanilla, should we? I almost feel like crushed curry would be nice. It was so easy on this one. Crushed curry is not a color that I use very often, but let's give it a go. I'm going to do one in very vanilla and one in crushed curry and see which one I like the most. So let's do for you. We'll use some Versamark. Don't be lazy and not get another block out. <laughs> 
And I like to do my stamping and embossing first versus die cutting because then I have to fit it in that little space and that can be more difficult. Now you also don't want to flatten your embossing. So just give it a bit of a flick. Get rid of any extra pieces. And let's get it heat set. Just had a thought what would look really cute on here is have gold on the edges, but I'm trying to keep this simple. And if you wanted to bring in the yellow, you could just add a little bit with a Stampin' Write marker or a Stampin' Blend. Let me know in the comments below which one you would do. I think I'm going to do the very vanilla, but I'm also going to just use my Daffodil Delight from the back of the paper so that if I slip, I don't make a mess. Yeah, I don't know. Ever do that one final thing and you're like, why? Why did I do that? I wrecked it. I don't know. I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Okay, so we are never going to see from the inside. So I'm going to just put a mini, three minis, on this little flag. And it won't say. <laughs> Now, as a final step, I think it might be cute to put some of the little festive pearls on there. Those pearls are so shiny. So the festive pearls, I think we shall use a couple of the gold ones. And funny story, it kind of depends when you got your festive pearls. Some of the packaging say red and green dots. Could have gone a little bit further over with my stamping, but it's too late now. Uh, so some of them say festive pearls and some would say, uh, some say green and red dots. I think that just took it from beautiful to stunning, didn't it? So let me know in the comments below which one's your favorite. Do you love the Lights Aglow DSP? Do you love the festive foils? Would you have done the very vanilla minus the yellow, of course, because meh. But I mean, we're playing, right? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So don't hesitate to play around. You never know how it's going to turn out. Well, maybe you do, but... I don't. I like to play. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you will consider hitting that subscribe button to catch a new video each and every week. On some weeks like this, you will even catch two. So thank you so much. We'll see you soon, my crafty friends. Bye.